and are probably thankful to be in hotel isolation after the fuse was relit on the Cape Town ball tampering drama. Uh, they stayed off Instagram over there, they've come home, it's a bit of a fire, there's a lot happened, crashed, even in the last uh, hour or so. Indeed, Tony, a uh, fascinating story just broken with the Australian fast bowlers releasing a statement about the ball tampering accusations from Cameron Bancroft and uh, I think the thing that really stirred them up was uh, Michael Clark on Breakfast Radio saying they had to know yep. that the ball was being tampered with by sandpaper in the Cape Town test four, three years ago. Well, here is the part of that statement from Australian bowlers. We pride ourselves on our honesty, so it's been disappointing to see that our integrity has been questioned by some journalists and past players in recent days. We did not know a foreign substance was taken onto the field to alter the condition of the ball until we saw the images on the big screen at Newlands. Uh, it goes on to say we've all learned valuable lessons and we'd like to think the public can see a change for the better in terms of the way we play. We respectfully request an end to the rumour mongering and innuendo. It has gone on too long and it's time to move on regards. Pat Cummins, Josh Hayeswood, Mitch Stark and Nathan Lyon. So this all comes to the back of Cameron Bancroft being interviewed uh, an English journalist uh, about this very incident that I'd put behind me. Yep. Uh, and he's saying that the, the bowlers will read between the lines that the bowlers would have known. He did, and I understand he's actually been in contact with several of the bowlers to sort of apologise and said he was, look, he's in the middle of a lifestyle interview and he sort of garbled his words a bit. But they were there, you know, they... they Duncan McRae's a thorough interviewer. He asked him twice and, and, and the text of it was there. It was hard to construe it as anything else than the so, bowlers So knew. what is the statement then? He's saying past players. You can only assume mm. the likes of... I oh know. Off the top of my head, Michael Clark has spoken about it. Yep. But when he's saying media and journalists, yeah. we, we haven't put this on the table, have we? No, no, indeed it's, not. It it's was Cameron Cam Bancroft, Bancroft who put it on the table. But in exact words, it was, it was self-explanatory. Self-explanatory, yeah. 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 And, and I think what uh, they protested when Michael Clark said they had to feel, you, you know what the ball feels like, so it had been sandpapered. And in that statement, they didn't mention Michael, but basically what they said was the umpires found the ball was fine and it had barely been touched by sandpaper, mm -hmm. so how would they have known anyway? And they reckon they, the first time they knew was when they looked up at the big screen and saw the replays of Bancroft. However, I have to say, I feel as if we're back where we were three years ago, you know, with the bowlers, you know, firm about their innocence and sort of at odds with the batsmen a bit. Like, it's... So will this mean that the batsmen have to come out and make another statement? Or, like, I know Bancroft said what he thinks mm. the bowlers knew. Does Steve Smith and... No. Stephen David Smith... Warner have to say anything? Well, that's the thing. David Warner is the man, one of the few, who knows the full story, mm -hmm. and he's not saying anything. And I think that's been a shrewd move by Warner. I like, he say, said no, absolutely I'm nothing. I'm happy for him not to say anything. Yeah, but... Um, but, but... Is he in quarantine at the moment? He's the yes. only one that can blow the lid on all of it, isn't yep. he? Yep. When he finishes his career, the big question is, is the tell-all book coming where he will name names? Well, well, do you know what? Everyone's saying yes. I don't reckon it'll come out. I mean, I, a mate of mine in the book industry said he'd get about 900 grand at least if he put his name it, to a book with the full... With, with, with that story with, in with, it. If there is a story there, Brandy. Do you, th do you think by the time that he retires that we will care? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean, it's, it's, the, it's, biggest it's, the, it's the biggest black mark But I will Australian say this. Cricket. Here's two cases for not doing it. Mark Bosnich uh, was offered a million dollars for a book yep. and he said no and he's never regretted it. And I remember Darren Lehman years ago penned his autobiography and he, was, he went really hard. Then at five minutes to midnight before it was going to the publishers, he said... I just can't do it. And he, and he took big slabs out of it, never regret it. So it's, it's all good and well saying, oh, I'm going to blow up the town, baby. But you've got to live a life beyond that. He, da David Warner's yeah. manager, James Erskine, now he says, and it might have been a quote that you got, Crash, yep. Yep. that between 25 and 40 people would have known what was going on. That's a massive number. That's the entire group and the entire setup. And the South African team, probably as well. So, yeah, I, I, uh, th that was a quote he gave to us, and he was fairly strong about it, you know. So, look, we, we, we may never know the truth, but I feel that with the naming of the Ashes schedule tomorrow, mm. there'll be players up and everyone up. I think the bowlers wanted to draw a line in the sand. They have to. Where they Absolutely. stand tonight. Yep. Yep. So yep. This is what we're standing and, by. And they're talking mm -hmm. to Cricket Australia that want this to go away very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. And we spoke to Nick Hockley today, who's just standing by... His theory that unless we get fresh information, yep. the matter is closed.